Demon Slayer is back, and boy, am I hyped for this. We have been waiting what feels like forever for season three of Demon Slayer, especially after the intense fighting and amazing animation that we saw back in season two during the Entertainment District arc. And today I just want to talk about how episode one of season three was for me. The first reaction I got from it, and the first thing I noticed was how long this episode was, 49 minutes long. And usually when you watch anime, they're only about 20 minutes. Not even the first episode of many seasons are this long. Demon Slayer is one of the few animes that do this, where the first episode is just long as fuck and i am not complaining about it because it's one of those animes that you know no matter what it's gonna be badass 20 minutes isn't enough sometimes if you subtract the ending the beginning of the episode you're really only left with about 20 minutes of actual showtime maybe like 18 19 and for an anime like demon slayer it just really isn't enough so when i saw that it was 49 minutes long i was ecstatic i was excited i'm happy as hell it was i wish every episode was this long but i think the next ones are just gonna be the normal 20 minute episodes which is still fine something is better than nothing because it has been a while since season two came out i want to say it's been i don't it hasn't been that long it's been maybe like a year and anime years i mean that's pretty quick there's some anime don't come out fucking till 10 years later five years later hunter x hunter hasn't even came back so thank god it's nothing like that but the badass thing about this new episode was first things first aside from that how long it was was the animation itself it starts off at the end of season two they finally know Suke, zanetsu netsuko and tanjiro and tangan and his wives the scouts do from the demon slayer corpse they take them and they tend to them and so on and so forth and then it pans to akaze i don't know if they showed akaze first or them rescuing the team but i do know that the akaze scene where he meets muzan was so badass immediately just intensity boom he's in the fucking infinite castle world i think is what he called it and he knows he's been summoned and he's confused as hell why he even got summoned because they never get summoned apparently they never see muzan i think for like years and decades and decades and maybe even centuries unless it's an emergency or i guess unless one of their own dies one of the upper moons and that's exactly what happened the upper moon that tanjiro tengen and the whole crew defeated was an upper moon and that's why they had to have a meeting an emergency meeting of sorts where muzan i guess calls everybody and just wants to talk to them about what happened and he's more likely than mad and yes he was but the first thing i noticed was as akal is moving throughout the fucking infinite world he's going up and down staircases blocks of buildings and it's just extremely great quality it's so high definition i was just in uh, I, was speechless. I was speechless, really. I was just so captivated by the colors, the smooth animation. And then there are moments where you do kind of get a hint of CGI. There has to be some CGI because it would be a bitch to fucking draw every single building, every single little detail. But the thing is, with this CGI, you really don't notice it. Like, it's almost like you got to kind of really put attention to it because it's done so well. It's not the type of CGI where it's blocky or like Trigun where it was fucking weird. Like, I know a lot of people love the new Trigun. I personally just could not watch it because of the CGI itself. But the CGI in Demon Slayer is so damn smooth. I just don't even know how they're able to do that so well. Meanwhile, other anime Animes tend to kind of fuck it up and there's parts where it's like cgi then drawn but the camera pans all around the cars and the building so good and so seamlessly like you don't even notice it like it's it's well done i just love it and it's so damn trippy how he's just moving throughout the whole world and going left and right and it's really a mind fuck and finally he stops we get to see other upper moons that i've never seen personally myself because i haven't read the manga we see upper moon four i believe and upper moon five for sure the weird ass one with the little hands on his face and two mouths and an eye on his mouth and night boss it, it, it's weird as fuck on his forehead i believe yeah it's weird and like yeah mouse for eyes creepy shit badass design i'm sure the author had a lot of fun designing these characters because he can kind of go wild with it and be weird and creepy as much as he wants compared to like a normal a normal looking human character he has to make them look human but still cool at the same time but the demons he can go wild on them make him all look make him look all freaky and shit and that's what he does same thing with the weird one that's like at the stairs constantly fucking tripping out and he says number three is like an omen number and he's like a cause a three and he's fucking making mass or some shit and he just tripping out odd numbers are fucking evil or some stupid shit like that and like badass badass and then finally we see the more badass character like doma come up he goes behind the cause he messes with him because he punches him in the face and doma doesn't give a fuck and they just don't seem to get along i thought 
Domo made a Kaze into a demon, but apparently there's a scene in the same episode where he says that he became a demon after a Kaze, but still went above a rank from him. And I think that's why they dislike each other. I don't know. I haven't read the manga, so I could be completely wrong. That's just my theory. I think it's just like a power thing where he just hates that he was surpassed by someone who became a demon after him. But anyways, finally, there's, I guess, like Muzan's assistant was the their version of a guitar. I forgot the word for it. And she, you know, she plays it and... They get transported left and right, and then Muzan finally appears, and it's badass. Not only do we get to see Muzan again, for the first time, we get to see Upper Moon 1, the strongest and most badass character in the whole series. I mean, arguably, you know, I don't know if the most badass, I guess it depends who you like, but the strongest in the demon world, at least, in the Upper Moon ranks, he's the strongest one. He almost looks more like a samurai, and I don't know, but to me, he looks a lot like the demon slayer that was fighting Muzan, that Muzan was scared of the sun dancing one, the one that we all know, that the one that we kind of thought Tanjiro's dad was. He looks like him, but I don't think he is him. I think that's been to his proven. I really, I'm not too sure. I've seen just like bits and pieces of people talking about it. I mean, it looks like him with the hairstyle, the sword. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was him and he turned to a demon. I mean, I mean, but then it wouldn't make sense that Muzan doesn't, has him as a lackey or it just, it's, there's a lot of back and forth on that theory. So I won't get too much into it. I'm more talking about the quality of the episode itself. So finally, Muzan is talking to them. He's pissed as fuck of why they haven't found the flower they're looking for. Why is it that an upper moon died? He has lost all hope in them. Domo's like, hey, I've always done my job. Don't be mad at me, you know? So once we get back to Muzan, he's in his table. He's chewing them all out. We see that the quality of just the science set on his table is off the charts. It looks so well done. I almost thought they took a picture of a real science set in the real world and just put it in the anime. When he breaks a glass through to the anger of it, you see the pieces shatter in slow motion. And then there's another part I didn't talk about. The soundtrack in this episode is fucking bad. It has a constant bass, the intense, slow fucking humming, and the weird vibe it gives, the intensity. It really shows his anger, and he's pissed as hell because they can't do shit right. And the glass shatters, and you see little pieces fly left to right, and you see the reflection, and they, they glisten. And they, they show the fucking table a lot with the glass breaking and him fucking playing around with the tubes and the pipettes or whatever the fuck they're called. You can tell they're really proud of how much work they put just into that one, like, five-minute scene of that happening. And and you notice, too, you're like, what the fuck? Like, that looks really, really well done. Like, almost, like, like realistic, like, ultra-realistic. And it really goes to show how much they really want this to work out, how much passion they have for the show itself. And then the rest of the episode is basically just them dispersing and being sent off to investigate some extra shit with Open Moon 5 and Open Moon 4 by Muzan. And, but that's really all the episode's really about from there on forward. It's just Tanjiro, he finally wakes up and Oski's on the fucking ceiling. It's really, there's a lot of more wackiness to it. And this is basically where we get the whole reason it's called the Swordsman Village arc because Tanjiro he needs his sword fix or a new one but the guy that makes it has gone missing so he decides to go to the swordsman village arc in order to find him so he can get his sword and continue fighting the demons so he sent off and goes through many checkpoints they plug his eyes plug his nose blindfold him and from there he gets to the swordsman village arc he gets to meet the head chief of the village he tells him the one that made his sword is basically his son and that he will be punished for the sword breaking because it's not Tanjiro's fault, it's his fault for making a cheap sword. And it's a whole lot of comedy at this point, a whole lot of funny characters and a whole lot of, you know, just wacky shit like usual. And then we get that little edgy scene that everybody was waiting for that I'm sure many people already kind of knew was coming. I think some people were afraid or kind of like hoping they wouldn't get censored because it might have been too edgy. But to be honest, it wasn't even that edgy. Like I've seen way, way worse in other anime. I don't even want to name some. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of worse anime. If we can look at high school dxd that's one just think about that so that's when he meant to love hashira and they go from there they have a good i don't want to explain the whole video the whole episode i want you guys to go watch it it's extremely well done i just want to come on here real quick and just give my quick reaction of how much of a badass episode it really was and yeah i mean that's about it let me know what you guys think of the episode and see you guys again next time